mentioned Winkle Bill. Yeah. Is that the first time you two played together? Uh, no, we played in a band before that, The Way, which were, funnily enough, a soul band. There about eight of us, two black singers. So we had black singers in Medway, where you didn't have in New York. Sometimes a girl singer. Did you come and play this part of Kent as well? Yeah, we played all over Kent, yeah. So we came down to Dover and... Uh, uh, Dreamlands. Did, 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 town Hall and Thanet and the Farkas. Yeah, we were, mm -hmm. worked a lot. Worked a lot, it was good fun. I, I, I was part of the rhythm section, uh, part of the, uh, the horn section there. Right. So, uh, that was really good for playing the same notes. <laughs> note for note. I think we were anything but no, sonic. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we certainly didn't have any of the, the movements. You didn't have the steps. Uh, Shambolic. No, I used to wave saxophone around sometimes, but <laughs> what was hardly uh, choreographed. <laughs> so how did you get from a soul review to uh, what, Graham Parsons? Just the music that Chris and I were listening to, really, at that time. You know, I mean, we were, uh, uh, I mean, we really liked those, the birds and uh, Sweetheart of the Radio, the country stuff, and uh, that kind of took me to Grand Parsons and the Burrito Brothers mm. and uh, New Riders and all those kind of early pre-Eagles sort of uh, poco mm -hmm. uh, country rock bands. So they were the kind of influences and we just wanted to do that kind of stuff. So you just basically... And in order to do, well, in order to do that, you know, we needed to find new people to play with. Yeah. And that's why we put together a band called Pass the Buck, uh, which worked quite a lot for a couple of years. Uh, but we had the same sort of problems with... I mean, it wasn't in the same kind of arena at the same level as the American band, but we were having the same kind of problems as the bands like the Brito Brothers were having. Yeah, we were playing at country venues, which were then kind of very much country and western venues, and they thought we were much too rock and roll. Mm. And then you played at a rock venue, they thought we were much too country. And so it was quite difficult to get the audience. You know, we worked, but it was uh, kind of hard work getting people mm. interested in it, really. So this was what, late 60s? Early 70, 70s. 70, early 70s, yeah, early very, 70s. very early 70s, yeah. Right. So 70 to 72, 73. Right. So Grand Parsons was the catalyst for you, was it? Well, yeah, in a way. I mean, he's a big influence. The birds, a great, great songwriter, and mm. uh, just the way he crossed stuff over. Uh, I mean, he played country music, really, but uh, it was, you know, very well written, very well played, and, mm. uh, and he was an interesting character. Yeah, that's for another day. <laughs> Did you get that bug as well, Jim? Did you sort of, were you aware of all the country? Oh, very stuff. Much, yeah, yeah, very much so. Well, my father was a big Hank Williams fan, oh, so nice. I sort of grew up with uh, Hey Good Looking and all this going on in the kitchen while he was cooking. So, yeah, and then the, I was always sort of, you know, aware of the country area of music because my, my mum and dad were big country music fans, you know. So, uh, and then the band that came along in, a bit later on, mm. which made it very interesting, mm. I thought. And as, as Malcolm said, Graham Parsons and the Birds and all that. But I'm 